Welcome back, Dick Badger Radio. Our name nine fifty Progressive Voice Minnesota and DickBadgerRadio dot com. You know, there's this big issue going on in politics in Minnesota in 2012. There is a series of constitutional amendments, and one of those is a constitutional amendment to suggest that we should put into our constitution the limitation on who can enter into matrimony, Mm -hmm. marriage status in the state of Minnesota, as recognized by the state. And uh, that's uh, raising a large question, and they're trying to suggest in this constitution that uh, the citizens of Minnesota should make it something not decided by the legislature nor decided by the court system, but rather in, in, enshrined into the, US, into the Minnesota Constitution that only opposite-gendered couples can be entered into the category of matrimony. And that raises a really significant question, and people are being asked to give their opinion about this. The problem with, with this uh, kind, of, kind of, um, of question is that it requires someone to ask a variety of questions and come to conclusions that are, that are really outside the scope of most people's regular thoughtfulness on mm-hmm. the issues of marriage and the issue of, of, of law in, in our state. Most of us don't. We don't know how laws are put together. We don't know why, they're, why, why they come into play. We don't know who makes them oftentimes or who initiated them, rather. And uh, it, it makes us ask a whole variety of these questions. So in the state of Minnesota, we're having to ask questions about what do we think about marriage and who should enter into it? Well, that's a really good question. And our guest today has some thoughts about that. That's right, Doug. It's Naomi Schwenke, and um, she holds a bachelor's in communication from Northwestern College in St. Paul. She has a master's degree in marriage and family therapy from St. Mary's in uh, St. Paul as well. And she's a Ph.D. candidate in family studies from Loma Linda University. And she is also my girlfriend. So our guest, Naomi Schwenke, has been thinking a lot about marriage, both between the two of you, apparently. I mean, your, your own marriage question, but also marriage uh-huh. as it relates to the well-being of a, of, of a civil society and how it should play out in our civic conversations. So, hey, Naomi, welcome to the show. Thank you. That's quite an introduction there. Yes, you, 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 you sound very impressive when someone <laughs> reads your credentials like that, don't you? Well, now I have to, you know, sort of back it up there. Yes. Um, I think this question about marriage is fascinating, and there's a lot of people all around the country doing fascinating work about this, because I think it forces us to ask questions about what is marriage. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in... um, this, the ideas that we have in this country about how we organize families. So it seems to me that we've decided that um, the best way to organize society is around families. Mm-hmm. So in a legal sense, um, that means certain things. In a religious sense, that means other things. In a cultural sense, that means other things. Mm-hmm. So across the United States, we have different categories now of legal recognition civil marriage, civil union, domestic partnership. So I'm interested in what happens to these families who are in these different categories. Oh, I see. So, so if someone were to live their life with a legal uh, recognition and they're in a category, some would be marriage or civil partnerships or uh, what'd you call them, domestic, domestic Do, partnerships domestic part- or civil, or civil unions. unions. Now, I don't know the difference between civil unions and domestic partnerships. Is, that, is there a, a, a standard definition between those, or a standard difference between those, or are they, are they different depending on what state? Right. I know we don't have much time here, so I'll spare you sort of the extended history, but yeah. they've sort of changed throughout the, the last 10 or 15 years. When they were first introduced, they didn't have all of the legal benefits of civil marriage, but they sort of progressed to have and be equal to civil marriage in most states. For example, Wisconsin's uh, domestic partnership is not equal to civil marriage. I see. But in California, domestic partnership is equal to civil marriage. So there's all of these different nuances, um, and depending on you know which state you're in, mm-hmm. it, it may mean something different. Because this is one of the things that we find out when someone starts dealing with marriage law, is that marriage is a law, are, are laws that are enacted, written, State by state. I mean, it's, it, we, while we function in the United States in a in a federal union, mm-hmm. this is one of the law sets that we've said. Let states each have their own laws as it relates to what it means to be married, mm-hmm. and that's in the state of Minnesota. That is uh, cared for by the county. So the counties issue marriage licenses, and those marriage licenses are for the state of Minnesota as issued by the county. So Minnesota will have a different law around marriage mm-hmm. than other states will have. And this is something that can create some confusion across the, across the union. Right. And I think as we begin to have this conversation in Minnesota, it's, it's really important to figure out this idea of marriage. Like, mm-hmm. like 
in my opinion, we can have religious or cultural ideas about marriage, which sort of have to do about sacraments and love and commitment and all those other things. But the state has an interest in it as well for other reasons related to children, protection of rights, all, all those sorts of things. Because throughout the centuries, throughout history, that's what we've come to. So now we're, we're sort of opening it up again to have this conversation, this wider conversation about it maybe it should include more people. And, and, and this is this is one of those places where you have these parallel definitions, right? For, so religious traditions also have their own distinctions of what it means to be married. So Correct. in Catholic theology, marriage means something dis- really different than what it can mean in Protestant Christian theology. It might mean something different than what it means in Jewish tradition or what it means in, in Muslim tradition. So in Catholic tradition, marriage is actually sacramental and mm-hmm. That's for people who don't know the, the categories of, of, of religious language. Sacrament means, um, uh, the definition of sacrament is a means of grace or the way in which God blesses or gives the grace of God to someone. And in marriage is one of those in Catholic theology. Mm-hmm. That's not so much seen that way in Protestant theology, where Catholics will talk about, look, marriage is the essential means by which God's going to establish the kingdom of God on earth along with the church. Mm-hmm. Church and marriage. Marriage becomes, in Catholic theology, your own little kingdom where you reign as the as the, um, the, the, the arbiters of the, the life of God in in your own family. So family and church are just, they're, 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 they're connected in a way that to Protestants, they'd be like, no, I don't really think uh, we think about marriage as quite so urgently important to our doctrine as it is in Catholicism. So you get a real difference. I think that's important because a Catholic living in Tennessee might have a really different cultural understanding of marriage than a Protestant living in South Dakota or than a non-religious person living in Minnesota. So you right. not only have these different terms within civil society about marriage, you right. also have these different terms within religion about it. So we really have this this varied combination of how people understand marriage in our society, don't we? Right, and when, and when you take it down to civil marriage, civil union, and domestic partnership, right. you can sort of see all those distinctions because a domestic partnership in California, for example, you just send in a piece of paperwork. Where as for civil marriage, you have to have witnesses and, you know, sort of the, the religion and the I cultural see. sort of celebration come together. Yeah. So you can begin to see the distinctions. And in my, in my research, that's what I'm studying is, are, do those cultural, religious and legal distinctions, do they play out in the lives of people who enter into these, um, these relationships that are recognized by the state? Well, and this is helpful where social scientists like yourself are trying to say, look, we, we all have our own cultural rationale for marriage and, and legal law, legal law, legal uh, requirements around marriage are really derivative of a, a larger cultural set. Yeah, they so. sort of mirror the history and the ideologies of, of culture. Right. So, so we, some of us are familiar with the fact that the phrase blue bloods means that you had in, in England people of similar family background, cousins marrying one another. That was a good thing. So you kept the bloodlines pure. But in the United States, we think, no, 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 no. cousins shouldn't marry one another. Right. Like, we don't want cousins right. to marry each other. And there's some reasons for that. Or in the state of Minnesota, we used to forbid people with epilepsy from marrying someone else, because we thought that was a problem. But now we let people with epilepsy marry. And that's but, why you had to get a blood test before you, because they wanted to make sure that you weren't first cousins. Yeah, you know? that you had these kind of limitations. Yeah. And now we, we don't worry so much about that, and we worry about some other things. So our marriage law is based on what we determine in our culture to be what I refer to as the ick factor. Do we think something's icky? Do we think something's sort of culturally off and those people shouldn't, shouldn't get married? And we used to say that people of different races couldn't be married in some, some places in our, in our society. Mm-hmm. So, so we have this changing cultural set that, that's going on. And for you all to now be saying, hey, let's look at what, what are the implications when we make these changes? Mm-hmm. And I'm someone who supports the fact that in the state of Minnesota, our state should not tell people that they should only be able to enter into marriage as it's as it's seen by the state if they're of opposite gender. I think that the same gendered people should be able to enter into to marriage because I don't think it's up to the state to determine who should be entering into that that marriage kind of kind of relationship. Um, but it's good to have people like you, it seems to me, who are asking these these other questions. Well, it seems like there's an understanding that um, what marriage is, is is codified, that this is what marriage is, and it, it, always, it, has it, it always has been, when really throughout history it's actually been quite fluid. 
Yeah, I think people are surprised by that because they will say, a lot of us think that our laws, because we're told by a certain stream of ideology, right. our laws are really, they go back to the Bible in this in this country, and that's, there's a Judeo-Christian law set, and basically all we're doing is kind of working out the details of, of some ever-existing moral, religious uh, set of assumptions, which right. just simply isn't the case. Right. And to John's point, we've had a, a quite fluid set of rules and laws and cultural um, cultural assumptions ar- around marriage, and those are those are changing. And you all are trying to say, what's the impact of this? And should we have data that comes from not just personal experience and religious tradition, but also from, from the, what's observed in social sciences? The lived experience of the the couples and the families in these legal categories. Now, it seems to me that there are on both sides of the the, the question in the state of Minnesota: should we have opposite gendered people be the only ones who can enter into marriage? That that question. It seems that people on both sides of this can make the the topic overly simplified. People who say we should just leave marriage as only opposite gender uh, have a way of simplifying that down to that's just the way it's always been and there's no reason to make a change. That's just, it would just be, you know, uh, violating everything we understand about marriage. Marriage is marriage, you know, that kind of thing. But then there's also the kind of way, there's also the way of simplifying it from people who argue the other side, which is, look, it's just um, people love each other. It shouldn't be any of your business who loves each other. And both of those seem to, to take the question of should we change our laws or not and make them overly simplified. Now, are we in trouble, those of us who want people to look at are, are changing laws from a more complex sense because people actually don't want to enter into conversations about the complexities of, of how we create our laws? Well, this topic for me is sort of my soapbox. So there's many different ways you could go down. For those people who say we should keep it the same, um, we, de- we need to have a marriage history class for, for them to sort of understand how we got here right. throughout throughout sort of centuries. Because mar- marriage used to be about economics and power, yeah. um, and it's evolved. Um, and for the other group of people, I think that we just have to be really clear about what we're actually talking about. Why does the state have an interest in that? Why is there a legal precedent set here? Yeah. And so we can have the conversations from all these different perspectives, mm-hmm. and every, each person can hold on to their view if we sort of understand sort of the complexity of this issue, and that not one person holds the like definitive, this is the way that it should be. Mm-hmm. Rather, we have to have a more complex conversation about it. And love as, as marriage is only a 21st century idea anyway. So, and, and that's a, a cultural and a religious sort of idea, a sensibility about marriage. Well, thanks. That's Naomi Schwanke. She studies this stuff for her living and uh, understands it that way. If you're wondering how you're supposed to vote on the constitutional amendment, just vote no, and that's the easiest That's, that's the easiest solution. <laughs> it's very complex, but if you're not sure what to do, vote no, or don't vote at all, because no vote is a no vote, if you know what I'm saying. Hey, Doug Padger Radio, religious radio that's not quite right, back on AM 950 and DougPadgerRadio.com here after the break. Thanks, Naomi.